Good morning, church. Welcome to Faith Lutheran on this third Sunday in Lent. We are glad that you're here. Those of you who are here in person and those of you who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook and who will be checking in during the week, welcome to Faith Lutheran. A couple of announcements before we get started. What a busy day we have here this morning. In between services, in case you just arrived, we had a letter writing campaign uh, which was ongoing. Following the service, if you'd like to add a letter to that, we have templates. And Judy Carlson, where is Judy Carlson? There she is in the front. She coordinated part of the letter writing part of this, along with the youth and uh, Deborah and Andrea and everyone else uh, and uh, all of our young people. Uh, they provided a hearty uh, pancake uh, breakfast, although I had waffles too, and uh, eggs and uh, sausages, delightful. Uh, but. Uh, the letters, uh, we were trying to entice you uh, so that this way as we feed ourselves we could be reminded of others who are dealing with hunger. And we are, are participating in what is called an offering of letters that Bread for the World, a wonderful Christian organization, does annually. And this way we try to entice, uh, we try to urge, we try to force our elected officials to care about people who are hungry, uh, not only in this country, but all around the world. So this letter is asking them to support the Farm Bill, uh, which does all those things. More information from that from Judy, and Judy, thank you for helping to arrange that and uh, being available after the service. Uh, a couple of other things uh, we have going on. Uh, we uh, have some guests, and uh, one of them will be speaking shortly uh, from the Holy Land, uh, from Bethlehem. And uh, some of you saw the olive wood carvings that are outside. We welcome our guests. We thank them for their ministry. Uh, but uh, one more second. I got a little list here today. Uh, but you're going you're gonna to get up here. Uh, so uh, Fida and her family are just wonderful. Uh, a couple of other things. Our faith walkers. There's Carolyn, front row, second row, third row. There she is. Uh, we're going to meet again on March 9th. Uh, we have this faith walking group. And uh, it's in your bulletin, 9.30 a.m. on March 9th, outside of Panera and Gulfgate. And we gather there. We go for a two-mile stroll. It's kind of like a stroll pace. No, no real exertion, but not super slow, right? We have great conversation, get a little exercise, and then we come together and we have coffee and we pray. We pray before we walk, lest we fall, and we pray when we get back in Thanksgiving. So uh, please be part of that. Yeah, Carolyn. One more thing. You're invited if you walk. Yeah, I was getting to that. <laughs> they could probably hear me better with the microphone. But um, Carolyn wanted me to remind you, if you're not a walker, say your knee isn't working as well as it used to, or you just uh, not, uh, that's not pulling you. Come for the coffee, right? Come for the coffee, the conversation, the community. Is that what you were going to say? That's it. All right, so you can meet us at Panera. What time should they meet us at Panera? Because our walk is about an hour, right? We start at 9.30. So maybe if you can arrive at Panera, maybe 10.20 or something like that, you can be our greeting crew, right? That would be fantastic. So thank you, Carolyn, for, uh, and Skip for being the point people on that ministry. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to uh, point your attention. We're having another blood drive. If you can give the gift of life, critical blood shortages, we do that here. Uh, and it's a wonderful ministry, uh, please sign up, please sign up. Uh, a little bird flew and told me today that uh, John White is having a birthday. Today is 90 years old. Oh. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear John and may God bless you forevermore we are celebrating with you you are a treasure to our church and uh, such an inspiration uh, to me and so many thank you John thank you uh, okay, uh, so now uh, we uh, are going to ask Feta to come up, and she is going to uh, please give your attention to her. Um, I'd like the young people 
actually, because I know we have some children that we're helping out and others. Um, can you come up here while Fed is talking? Because I'm going to say a little word right after she's done, but I want you to meet her. So any young people, come on up. Rebecca and Charlotte, come on up. The other young people that maybe are not so young, come on up. So this is Feta, and she's from where Jesus was born, right? Yep, right, Bethlehem. from Bethlehem. All right, so, so come over here. You can listen with me while she talks, and then we can talk with her for a second. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Feta Hanuna from Bethlehem, the Holy Land. Today, I'm here with my father-in-law, Suhail. We are volunteering for a very simple but a very important ministry. And our ministry is to support the Christian families of the Holy Land by selling their handmade olive wood religious carvings. Why we are doing this, you may be asking. Because normally, Christians and tourists will be visiting Bethlehem and the Holy Land and will have these items over there. The problem is that for the past years, Christians are not visiting. They are afraid to do so because of the conflict and going war and uh, because of the wall built around the city of Bethlehem, turning it into a large prison. And since the majority of the Christian community depends upon tourism and upon selling these crafts to make their daily living, it has become very difficult for those families to manage themselves and to afford living in the Holy Land. This causes most of them to immigrate and leave the country. The Christian population went down from being 30% as Christians in the Holy Land last century to less than 1% nowadays. And if it goes like this, in few years, you will find no Christians in the land of Christ. Can you imagine that? I cannot. The land where Jesus and his disciples lived and from there spread the Christianity to the whole world, ends up with 61% Jews, 38% Muslims, and less than 1% Christians. And in few years, 0% Christians. This is why we are here today. We want to stop Christian immigration and preserve Christianity in the land of Christ. So we bring these crafts handmade by the Christian crafters in Bethlehem and Jerusalem, we try to sell them here at the churches and get them back the revenue in order to help them have some little income, keep working and stay in instead of leaving and immigrating. So if you decided to come to our display and choose your gift, then your gift will be very special for many reasons. First, they are made from the olive wood, which is considered a hardwood that lasts for generation and generation. Actually, by time, it will get prettier because the oil inside the veins of the wood will dry out and the colors of the wood will be prettier. Second, it is a holy piece from the Holy Land. Yes, as a Christian of the Holy Land, we believe the olive tree is a holy tree. And it was mentioned several times in the Bible. Jesus entered Jerusalem holding branches of olives, tree and palm tree. Jesus' last prayer before crucifixion was in the Mount of Olives under an olive tree. This is why we do not cut olive trees. We prune them, and from pruning, we do these beautiful carving. Third and most important for your gift to be very special, it is a gift with a cause. Because each piece you buy, each nativity set, will support a Christian family in the Holy Land. Yes, it is not too late. We can make a difference, and each one of you can make a difference too. Get your gift, and you will, you will help and support a Christian family. Thank you, my brother and sisters, for listening, and thank you, Pastor, for letting us to come here to the church today. Thank you. 
Is that better? Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right, so um, something that Betta said was really important. She said, brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Did you know Betta is not Lutheran? <gasps> she <laughs> is Roman Catholic, or grew up Roman Catholic, and her husband, Shaddy, right? It comes from an Orthodox tradition, right? But did you know that by marriage, the previous Lutheran bishop of the Holy Land in Jordan, Bishop Yunip Munan, right, who was a friend of mine, uh, and uh, he's a wonderful man, is also related to your family, right? But in the Holy Land, because there are so few Christians left, really, the Orthodox, the Lutherans, the Catholics, they look at each other like they're all part of Jesus' family. They work together, they support one another, right? Who's in your family, Charlotte? And who's in your family, Rebecca? Okay, that's great, sisters. Who else is in your family? Point them out. Who else is in your family? Point them out. Yeah, you're getting it, right? I know, I know. It's, you, you guys are awesome. So, of course, our church, our faith family, right? We, every week we come together, we are reminded that we were all baptized into Christ Jesus and we're all part of that wonderful family and that we care for one another. And it's easy when you come to church and you see each other's faces to start to develop some genuine love for one another, right? To assist one another. But that's not all we do, right? So we open our doors to the neighborhood and the folks that come to like the food pantry, they're not strangers. Are they strangers? Are they those people? No. no, they're our family too, right? They're our family too. And not only those people, people that come for Bible study or for bereavement group or all these other groups, they're our family. But all around the world, all these other Christians are our family. But guess what? I'm going to say something radical here. Radical means a little crazy. <laughs> Jesus said stuff that was radical all the time. And one of the things that Jesus reminded us is that we are all God's children. All the people in the whole world were God's children. Sometimes we forget we're all part of that one family of God, right? And that's the point. So today, you guys helped to feed us so we could write letters so people all over the world could also be fed. So that our elected officials might make choices with budgets and way things are spent so that farming could be protected and so that food items could be distributed widely, not only here, but everywhere. So even like in India or Africa or Haiti, other places. So I wanted you to meet Feta and maybe, um, how do you greet people in your family? Can you give her a hug? I think she'd love one. There you go. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, girl. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We have to worship, right? <laughs> we are so blessed. Please stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts and who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by Christ's authority alone, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear fault witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The commandment of the Lord. declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. Where God has pitched a tent for the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of 
the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. By them also is your servant enlightened. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But, do, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Let us as you promise, we will trust your word. Save us as you This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables, making a whip of cords. He drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture 
and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So did you hear about, uh, about Frosty? He had a terrible, terrible temper tantrum. Complete meltdown. <laughs> Complete meltdown. All right, as I start now, I'm still in the comedy classes, by the way, not a graduate yet, right? We hear this text often wrongly. We think that it is there so we can justify our lousy behavior when we have temper tantrums. Even when we act out in anger, especially self-righteous anger. This text doesn't give you the right to put a bumper sticker on your car or wear a shirt that says, when you ask, what would Jesus do? Flipping over tables and chasing people with a whip is within the realm of possibilities. <laughs> Jesus is doing something here which is very, very well thought out. It's not spontaneous, and he takes time. It is an object lesson, and in John's gospel, it comes in the early part of the, of the gospel. He is using this to set the stage for the three years of ministry that he will do in their midst until his time is up. What he is doing is symbolic, but it also prophetically will be realized in Jesus' own crucifixion, in his own sacrifice. That's what Feta's name means, by the way, right? Sacrifice. So I know that you probably, like me, were a fan, maybe you didn't admit it, but of All in the Family, right? Archie, right? Edith, Meathead, Gloria. A fantastic commentary on society done in a style of parody with brilliant actors that were trying to display a greater truth in that living room of that common house where they all gathered and Archie was in a chair. He would often represent bigoted and hateful points of view. And there would be a counterpoint, and somewhere in the show there would be an aha moment and you would see that there was a lesson there that was grounded in much more humility and love than first appeared. Even though Archie might have had problems with his son-in-law, it was his family. And that became clear. There was love there. Jesus is reminding the people of Israel, his own people, this is not an anti-Semitic tirade either, Jesus is. He's remembering to his family their story. That they were set aside as a special people of God, not for themselves. So they can cherish that special status but so that they could be a light, as Isaiah says, to lead everyone together to God's love. Beautiful message. But somewhere along the way, it got lost. 
And it got lost to the point where it was not even through the testifying of prophet after prophet and reform movement after reform movement. It was not changing to where it needed to be. So God sent Jesus to be the change, to initiate the change, to open our eyes, to open our hearts, to do something radical that wasn't supposed to be a one and done, but to create a way of understanding for all peoples that we are part of the family, that we're all in the family family of God, and that the concerns of our brothers and sisters across the world, around the corner, are our concerns too. A very important lesson indeed. The prophets often did things which were outrageous. Ezekiel laid on his side for 300 and something days to signify how many years the Israelites lived in sin. Hosea married a prostitute and named their first three children after the sins of the people to get their attention. And Jesus goes into the temple. And he disturbs things. Symbolically showing that this temple doesn't matter because it's lost its usefulness. We have to get out of this living room to one that's far greater. And that is one that we share in Christ. That's our living room. We live and move and have our being in Christ. Our living room. That's where our family dwells together. This week, UNICEF put an announcement out. 17,000 children in Gaza are severed, separated from their families. 17,000 children. To give you a little perspective, Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, uh, fed his hometown, right? Is only, you know, the distance between here in Tampa or here in Fort Myers, Bethlehem to Gaza is less. It's even less than here to St. Pete, Clearwater. That's how close Bethlehem is to Gaza. 42 miles, about. 70-something kilometers, right? Doctors Without Borders, their head psychiatrist, her name is Dr. Audrey McMahon, commented on this new acronym that's right now becoming commonplace when talking about this tragedy, WCNSF, WCNSF. There are so many WCNSFs stands for Wounded Children, No Surviving Family. In the UK, I think it was in the Mirror, was it the Mirror? The Daily Mail, so thank you. There was a report that said that um, never before has there been such a, a problem of orphans created by war in such a short amount of time in such a concentrated area. Dr. McMahon said that this situation is something that causes shame for the entire human family. Because as we have breath and agency, if we are quiet and do not 
make an issue about it and allow it to continue, it will continue. Those children are our children. Because every single child of God matters. We're all in the family together. You know, we never sell anything in our narthex. Never. So it's really ironic that of all the days, <laughs> the day we hear about Jesus flipping over tables and money changers out in the courts, but it's such beautiful, poetic irony. You see, because a simple reading of this text says, oh, no, I can't talk about money. And it gets everybody off the hook, too. Because talking about money makes everybody uncomfortable. I'm looking at Steve, our stewardship chair, because he knows this truth greater than anybody else. But we have to talk about money, right? Because it's a tool that helps to secure the things that are necessary for life. For a congregation, it's a tool that helps us to fuel ministry so that others may live. In this case, in the case of Jesus, he's disrupting the place because it was just self-serving. You see, the Roman occupation had caused such an oppression in the area. The temple was not only a place for ritual sacrifice, it was also a place where politics were conducted. And Caiaphas, the head priest, would meet with the Roman authorities there. They would negotiate. The leaders, the religious elite in Jesus' day were in cahoots with the oppressive Romans so they could continue to squeak out their, the benefits that they had within their society. And that injustice would continue. That's why Jesus had to do something different. God had to do something different through Jesus and create a bigger living space through Christ, which knows no bounds. So today, instead of selling items in the narthex or doing banking and changing money, we are showing our support for our brothers and sisters who, right now, because of the war, are out of work. They survive by selling these in souvenir shops, this Christian population. Almost every family has some tie to this. It's amazing. So they're all feeling it. They don't want to leave their homeland but may be forced to. So ours is the counter of that. And we have an opportunity to do that also with our letter writing, to tell the hungry in our neighborhood and the hungry in India and in Africa, all over the world, that there are people that care, that are here in this country, that have full bellies with pancakes, that have a nice life, that have leisure time. Now we care about those who spend every moment obsessing about where will they sleep, how will they eat, how are they going to provide for their children. It doesn't get any more real than this. In the Synoptic Gospels, we have this account toward the end of Jesus' ministry, and it's what gets him arrested and gets him dead. But here, in John, it's at the beginning, setting the stage, telling the story, predicting the end, which will then be a new beginning. He's talking about what it will look like for those who will live a resurrected life. Who will worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And who will look beyond themselves to a reality 
that God calls us to. Not a small one that is self-serving, but one that is beautiful for everyone. So brothers and sisters, on this uh, beautiful Sunday in our Lenten journey, where you have opportunities to support people in Bethlehem and support hungry folks around the world and support the small farmer who tries to grow the crops for people to eat, I invite you to remember the blessing that you have by being in God's family. None of us are worthy of that status to be really a child of God. It is only through the invitation of Jesus who takes our sin upon himself and is the sacrifice. Tony Campolo, uh, a really wonderful teacher of mine for a period of time, a great preacher, he was uh, telling a story, and um, it's a little bit hard to hear. So he was on a campus, and there was a senior in college, and uh, the senior said to him, um, you know, I, uh, I'm having an adulterous affair, but I know, uh, Dr. Campolo, that, uh, that Jesus paid for my sins. And Dr. Campolo said, you know, you're right. But the next time you're sinning, I hope you can hear the cries from the cross. Because Jesus just took your sin upon himself so that you could be in God's family. We didn't earn our place. And constantly we need to be reminded of God's grace. And we need to share that grace with everyone. Not only with kind words and you're in my thoughts and prayers. But with actions. With food for the hungry. With shelter for those who are out on the street. With clothing for those who are naked with visitation to those who are alone. This is how we continue to declare that all are in God's family, just as Jesus did on the cross. Amen.
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the world, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to the mystery of your presence and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You renew creation. Drive out those who would make the earth a marketplace. Protect rainforests, mountaintops, oceans, and wilderness areas from com commercial exploitation. Unite nations, policymakers, and businesses in efforts to reduce carbon emissions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You judge the nations. We pray for an end to war and strife in every land, especially Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Gaza. Strengthen international efforts to negotiate peace and provide humanitarian aid to people fleeing from conflict. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring healing and hope. We give thanks for physicians, nurses, researchers, therapists, and public health workers who prevent and treat illness. We pray for any who are sick or struggling, especially those on our prayer list and those we name now before you or allowed in our, in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You abide with your people. Sustain any in this community undergoing life transitions, marriage, divorce, childbirth, adoption, moving, graduation, employment change, or a death in the family. We especially pray for those preparing for baptism. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring life from death. We remember our loved ones who have died, confident that they now have new life in you. May we trust that nothing can separate us from your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, in Genesis, you remind us that we are our brother's keeper. When you approach Cain after he murdered Abel, you asked where his brother was, and he responded, am I my brother's keeper? You then turned to him and said, what have you done? Help us to remember that lesson, and also the lesson that your son Jesus taught us on the cross when he gave his friend, the beloved John, his mother, Mary, as his own mother. And he said, woman, this is your son, and this is your mother. Please help us to think about family the way you think about family, and to be inclusive, and to assure that all are treated fairly and equally. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please rise if you're able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share Christ's peace.
Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, you call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of glory, Hosanna in Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Oh, our Father, Lord, Lord, Lord in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come to the table of our Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table, we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. <laughs> Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you grace. Just a reminder, as you leave the sanctuary, the, this side is the express lane, this side is the slow lane, but even if you go down the express lane, please stop if you haven't already and visit Feta and her family. And there's still pancakes and stuff left over, you can get some for takeout, right? Thank you very much. Go in peace, share your bread. Thank you, God. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. You did it good. God bless you. Blessings. Uh, no. Bless you. Thank you. Good to see you. See you, Michael. Good to see you, Amanda. So good to see you. Yep, let's do that. Good morning. How are you? I try. I try. I try. Good morning. How are you? Did that work? Good. Good. No, good. I just wanted to be, you know, honest. But it worked out great. Hi, Pete. Good morning. And how's your sister's healing? Good morning. 